Greetings, loyal airmen, and hey, welcome to another Airship 27 podcast, number 61. I'm one of your co-hosts, Captain Ron Fortier, and joining me as he does every month, Chief Engineer Rob Davis. Hey, buddy, how's it going? It's going well. Welcome to all you loyal airmen. Thanks for giving us another hour of your time that you'll <laughs> never get back. <laughs> you know, before we get going, I've been posting on Facebook about this, but I we really need to thank all all you loyal airmen because the last two shows numbers have been insane. 59 is now up to 98 views and episode 60 last month's show has crossed the 100 mark barrier and is at 107 views now. Wow. So, hey, I, you know, hey, whatever, you know, please, whatever we're doing right, let us know. <laughs> it'd be, it'd be great if we had millions, but, uh, yeah, but hey, we'll take, hey, this is, that's pretty good for us. That's very th- good for us. I think that's really, really <laughs> great. Uh, we appreciate you joining us for this crazy Every month. Every one of you. Thank you. Yes. All right. And so, hey, as we do with bad jokes, I know some of you live for this. Every- <laughs> Right. Oh yeah. That's that's not much much of a life, but hey, (laughs) we're only too glad to provide them. And this month Rob kicks us off, so let him fly, buddy. Okay. I I couldn't find one for this for the month of March, but this one's caught my eye. Saint Peter is assisting applicants to heaven three at a time. He's leading the latest trio around, showing them the best clouds where to get the best harps, best wing cleaning service, et cetera. One guy has a complaint, though. What's with all these ducks? They're everywhere and getting underfoot. St. Peter looks alarmed and says, you must never step on a duck. Those are God's favorite. If you step on a duck, you'll be punished for all eternity. The three are left to their own devices, but inevitably, one of them steps on a duck. After much quacking ensued, St. Peter sternly marches up and handcuffs the offender to the ugliest woman the three have ever seen. You were warned. Now you're attached to her for all eternity. The other two are now more careful about trying to avoid stepping on ducks. But as luck would have it, one of them manages to do so to the same scenario with an even uglier woman. The remaining man is so careful he can hardly move, but manages to manages to go for several years without stepping on a duck. In spite of this, he sees St. Peter sternly approaching him with a woman and a pair of handcuffs. But the woman isn't ugly. She's drop-dead gorgeous. The man muses, I wonder what I did to deserve this. The woman replies, "I I don't know about you, but I stepped on a duck. That's good. That's good. That's 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 a hell of a joke. Oh, <laughs> oh, don't worry, oh. you got a wood. No, no, no. I had no clue where that was going. Oh, yeah. All right. That's that's wonderful. I, that's awesome. It'll 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 Everybody get repeated. That one. It'll <laughs> get repeated a lot around here. Believe me. Okay. And I'm sure Micah Harris is writing this down right now <laughs> as we talk. Good joke. All right. Okay, folks, so we're off and rolling here, okay? Agenda number one. And I think it's only fitting that this be the number one agenda. So here we go. Welcome, Guy Davis. After pleading and begging for new artists for the past few shows, we're delighted to welcome to the Airship 27 family a Colorado artist named Guy Davis. Guy's a huge Star Trek fan and has had his own Star Trek inspired website online for several years. His first illustrations working for us at Airship 27 will be for the book, The Silver Pentacle, a a actually fantasy series. Remember we talked about fantasies last month, all right, that we are going to be publishing as written by, of course, Nancy Hansen. So again, welcome aboard, Guy. Guy, I have to add, Rob, is um, a member of our local uh, comics and artist group here in Fort oh, Collins. Cool. Although he lives in Denver, 
uh, we've become friends over the years attending local shows in the state, and he right. tries to come up like once every couple months. He'll come well, up. Well, it's for the only an hour drive, so right. yeah. yeah, yeah. And he likes, you know, to share the camaraderie of everybody. So yeah. he joined us two weeks ago, and as we were breaking up around noontime and getting everybody's getting ready to go home, guy had been showing me new pictures in his portfolio, which I really appreciated and enjoyed a great deal, and so. He had told me he wasn't doing the web strip. He'd taken a hiatus of it and wanted to get back to sketching and drawing and okay. was just feeling his way back to it. Well, after seeing samples of his work, going out the door, I pulled him aside and I said, do you ever think of doing illustrations? His face lit up and he goes, what? He said, for you guys? I said, totally for us guys. And I said, I think I have a book you'd enjoy. So I send him Nancy's manuscript. And he got back to me two or three days ago. He's read it once and started <laughs> thumbnails already. Very enthusiastic. All right. Cool. And, now, and now is starting to do the actual sketching and whatever, which you should eventually be seeing as, you know, we have artists share their okay. ills with us as they go along. But Guy is very enthusiastic. He loves the book and he's very anxious to be a part of the team. So. Again, Cousin Guy. <laughs> thank you, Guy. And for all your other artists out there or friends, as we've been saying, please, uh, you won't get rich, but we think you'll have fun. So, yeah. all right. Okay. And now, now Rob and I are going to talk about something that's really heavy duty and important. Uh, so pay attention, Bear Lloyd Blairman. Go get them, Rob. Okay. Beware. Internet crooks. Recently, one of our writers learned that her book was being sold on a site other than, other than ours or Amazon. When she went to investigate this site, she learned it was operated in a foreign country. Naturally, she was confused by this and then saw that there was a place on the site where one could file a complaint regarding rights to the actual book. As if the operators of the site were honest folks and did not want to infringe on the author's or publisher's rights. So she went ahead and filled out the complaint form and turned it in. The next day, her book was removed. Okay. So let's backtrack here and see how all of this was bogus and how she, like so many other people, actually fell victim to it. Number one, it is impossible for any other site other out there to have a physical copy of any of our titles. The only way that's even possible is if they somehow hacked into Amazon's Kindle files. And then they would have to, at their own cost, go out there and find printing presses and whatever and take these stolen files and actually print books. Okay, naturally, none of that occurred, okay? What they did do, and is very easy to do for anyone, is they simply swiped the book's cover from Amazon, then posted it on their site with a price tag. Okay? So, in effect, what they claimed to be selling was non-existent. All right? Anyone yep. buying that title would have, been, would have paid via a credit card and received nothing in return. That's the first part of the scam. Okay, and the second part of the con is even more devious. And this depending on author's bogus site, they include this complaint page where the real author can file author or publisher can file a grievance to have the book removed. Of course, to do so, the author has to list their data, including name, email, etc. Thus allowing the scammers to use this information to either spam them or or try to cheat them in some other way. Bottom line to all you writers out there, please be wary. If, you're work, if you work for a legitimate publisher and have your book on sale on the internet, it is relatively safe there, really. It, it really is. Don't be fooled because a bogus site has captured the image of your book and is attempting to rob people with it. Just be sure to assure to, assure to let your friends family, and readers know that these sites are crooked and to only buy books directly from you or your publishers. And, and the real giveaway is that the, the prices they were selling them for was less than our Kindle books are, are right. priced. Exactly. And, they were try, and they were talking about published books. That's a dead giveaway. If, it, if it's too good to be true, it is too good. If it looks too good to be true, it is too good to be true. Right. So that's, right. that was kind of the giveaway on that. 
Yeah, I mean, we had we had an experience way back when we started the company, as you'll recall, all right, which was yeah. ra- rather insidious, all right. Somebody got a hold of one of our book PDFs and right. went out and actually printed the damn thing, <laughs> all right. I mean, and, and, and of course, it was sloppy as hell. And then they managed online to sell it to some poor guy out there who thought he was buying a legitimate Airship 27 book. Well, obviously, when he got this crass, crude, stapled together piece of junk in the mail, he raised holy hell on Amazon and, and to us. And how could we publish such trash and whatever? And as I recall the incidents, Rob, you basically said, send me the damn book and let's see what this is all about. Yeah, well, let me did. look at it. Right. Yeah. At which point we realized we hadn't published this. Amazon hadn't published this. This was a ripoff, blatantly. Yep. And you know, in good faith, we literally gave the guy a good. I sent him copy. a good copy. Yep. Yeah, I sent him a good copy. Right. Yeah. So again, you, you just have to be wary if you're shopping online, and especially in the book market where these things happen all the time. All right. It's like it's like the end of, of what Rob finished saying. Okay. Number one, nobody's going to have physical copies of your books. That's damn impossible. All right. Well, the only way they're going to have them is if they buy them from me. <laughs> Duh. Okay. Yeah. Right. And if, I do, if they sell, I do sell who's copies. Do, they, yeah. who's, who's losing? That's that's just not yeah. real. Again, I sell them to bookstores occasionally, but but uh, and it's mostly friends of ours from uh, from like Windy City and Pulp Fest that, uh, right. that uh, they're also dealers. They'll right. ask us to send them a, a supply of books for their for their customers. They have they're legitimate sellers. Yeah. They're yeah. Legitimate. So I give them to them at a wholesale price. Right. I mean that that's the you know that's the best way to go about it. But anyway, that's that's about the only way you'll see a physical copy that isn't directly from us or from Amazon. So right. And again, like I said, the sad thing about it is this particular writer thought that, you know, they had taken care of the problem by filling out this complaint thing. <laughs> but again, you're just giving scammers your information. Well, and at first that's what I thought was the thing to do too, and then but then I then I realized that's what that that's what it was all about. They were just trying to get data. They were trying right. to get they were uh, and that and now they can sell that. That's a real address. You can send spam to that address now. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Hey, on to some better and, and, better and more better. affable stuff. Here we go. All right. Charles Saunders presents. Since his arrival on the fantasy adventure scene back in the nineteen seventies. Charles Saunders has been recognized as one of the most successful African-American writers in the field today. His action adventure hero, Imero, has been, a, has been featured in a half a dozen novels, all of which went on to inspire generations of young black authors. In 2011, Saunders wrote Dambala, the first ever black pulp hero for Airship 27 Productions. Operating out of Harlem in the 1930s, Nambala employs unique African magic to battle gangsters and crooked politicians. Two years later, Saunders introduced the jungle witch Lulama in his short story, Mintumi. I hope I said that right. (laughs) Imtimu, I think it is. Imtimu. It's it's M capital M P I M U. Again, that's Imtimu. But that's a guess. Okay. Which appeared in the Prose production best-selling anthology, Black Pulp. At the start of the tale, the beautiful Ulama is a servant of a villainous hunter, and by the story's end, she realizes his true nature and regains her independence thanks to the hero, Min... Min... M- Moo. Min- <laughs> Moo. Yeah, MT Charles, we're gonna have a long talk about the names of these characters. Okay. <laughs> Atypical That's my a- problem <laughs> pronouncing the stuff. Okay. A- M- a- a- M- Atypical Saunders of Saunders town. She's a powerful character, worthy of her own series. Why don't you pick it up from there, buddy? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say that one that more. Name. <laughs> Airship 27 Productions is proud to announce their creation of two new ongoing book series. Charles Saunders presents Dambala and Charles Saunders presents Luluma. In recent years, Charles Saunders has been extremely busy working on a truly unique black fantasy saga, so much so that it became impossible for him to devote any time 
to, to this, his other creations, like those two that we just mentioned. And when we suggested the possibilities of continuing both Dumbala and Luluma with other writers, he was very excited about the concept and gave us his approval. Have no fear. He will be overseeing each series as they progress. Writing the first ever Luluma or Lulama, I'm not sure which it is, will be a writer-publisher, Milton Davis of MV Media LLC, while Pulp Factory Award-winning writer Derek Ferguson will write the all-new Dumbala adventure. And I'm sure he's excited about that. Oh, At, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At present, there is no specific time set for the re release of either of these new books. Our plan is to move forward with full-length novels first. Later, if there's an interest, we may also produce anthologies featuring both Dumbala and Lulama. We'll leave that up to our network of pulp writers and the response of our readers. We see some truly amazing possibilities in the future for both characters and are greatly indebted to Charles and his faith in us. Yep. And, hey, uh, yeah, I, th this is one of the things. Charles Saunders and I go back uh, a long time, Rob. Both of us yeah. pretty much came into writing about the same time. And early on, I want to say as early as the 19... 70s late 1970s he and i actually belonged to an online writing service and basically i watched his rise to professionalism uh he eventually ended up at that paperback company daw books oh and yeah that, that was where his first imro <coughs> sold and it, it, then he became like i said uh, uh one of the most well-respected writers in the fantasy adventure field and we've maintained that friendship over the years even to the point of valerie and i traveling to canada uh to nova scotia to visit with him one time so anyways getting him on board airship 27 when you and i started this this whole new pulp thing and getting him to create dumbala was a real feather in our cap because this really was the first ever black avenger in pulp fiction okay obviously because of the era and the time racism was was such a thing in the 30s yeah. that uh, i mean if, if black characters or any minority characters appeared in stories it was always in supporting roles they were never given the spotlight you know and and, and just totally unfair so charles delivers dumbala it, it was a big hit for us fans loved it everybody enjoyed it tremendously and ever since i've you know been bugging him to, you know, <laughs> when are we going to get more? Please, we want more Dumbala. Well, the kicker was not that he didn't want to do it. Right. But right now, he is in the process of writing perhaps his opus of his writing career. Uh, his basic way to explain it, Rob, is uh, he's already written one book in the series. Uh, there's going to be a series of maybe five, six books that are going to be his uh, African Lord of the Rings. Yeah, okay. wow. And okay. it's 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 what his whole career has led up based to. In, based in African lore and, and, right. uh, and all he's that. Ta he's taken all authentic wow. African mythology, but then created this alternate African world, like Howard did. You know, like Robert E. Howard did with Hyboria, right? But basically right. so okay. basically you've got you've got authentic African mythology, but in an Africa where there were no whites. This is his Africa. This is Child Son. This is Africa. And it's filled with action, adventure, amazing characters, magic. Sounds like a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, believe me. All right. Uh, so that being the case, after a few years of procrastinating, he finally drops me a line and says, I am really sorry, but I don't see myself finishing, you know, another Dumbala. And we'd even talk about plots or whatever. So not one to let something good, you know, <laughs> slip out of my hands ever. Uh, I got to talking about the uh, thinking about those other writers out there who, you know, this is cottage industry stuff. When publishers have best-selling series from a writer, they basically get other writers to do those characters. Okay. Right. Uh, James Patterson is, it comes to mind immediately. He's got like five or six different series that he co-writes with other writers, all right? Co-writes. Uh, he yeah. co-writes, yeah, okay. And, of course, the late Clive Cussler, who recently passed away yes. uh, just last week. Sadly. Right. Uh, they had done this with him. They would allowed right. him to create four or five series and then handed those off to other talented writers who wrote adventure series in his vein. 
So the big headline would be, Kyle, you know, Clive Cussler, but then you'd see the other writer's with, name. With, right? yeah. <laughs> and, the, you know, they, nothing wrong with that because the fans get to still enjoy the characters, which they love. And mm -hmm. so that was, that was my thought. So I got back to Charles and said, <clears throat> what would you say if we found talented writers that you approved of to take over these two series and give our readers more of these great characters in, in future adventures. And he immediately thought of Derek uh, right off the bat for right. Dumbala. All right. right. And, and when I approached Derek, as, as you said, all right, he was <laughs> mine. I got a letter back saying, okay, I just picked myself up off the floor now. All right. <laughs> Okay, so here, here's where we're at with all this. And Milton Davis was so gracious again in coming on board with Lulama. So where we're at with the series now is Charles has actually written both of them. I've confirmed this and wrote them a short one-page outline for where he would like them to start. Oh, okay. Books. Not more than that, just like the opening chapter or whatever, right? The right. direction he'd like to see each character go. Okay. And he would have ultimately written himself. And Derek let me know that and, and actually shared that letter with me. And both of us were, were like, thumbs up. This is awesome. And Derek is hopefully next week going to start working on his novel. So we could cool. conceivably see that before the end of the year. And hopefully, wow. I think, I don't think, I don't think Milton's going to let much grass grow under his feet either <laughs> once we get going. So stay tuned, loyal airmen. Um, again, you know, falling back into the realm of, of that discussion, it's ironic, Rob, you know, but here we go. These are going to be fantasy adventure novels. Yeah. So, yeah. So by the end of the year, what with Nancy Hansen's uh, Silver Pentacle, uh, Pentacle and now this, we're going to be doing fantasy books. We went, we went from doing none to now we're doing three. It's so. the nature of the beast. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's the way it goes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So now let's shift gears just a slight bit away from the pros. The next issue of All Star Pulp Comics. As most loyal airmen already know, it has been a while since we put out All American Pulp Comics number four. Yep. Uh, many of you have asked, when will five be coming out? <laughs> well, we're happy to tell you that we've been actually active in assembling that very issue. Yeah, Today, slowly. But, yeah, yeah. It's, it, we piece it together. All right. Today, we've received one completed eight-page strip, a Crimson Mass story by Mark Holmes. And yep. then our own marketing guru himself, uh, Michael Vance, turned in an eight-page with Dr. Fear strip. All right. Yep, I have that okay. in files. Yeah. Okay. And now uh, artist Mike Belcher has halfway finished another eight pager starring a brand new pulp character called Night Shift, which I helped him create. Okay. Okay. And T. Glenn Bain, the gaming guru himself, all right, who put out the uh, Cape Noir role playing game a few years ago, all right, right, is now almost finished drawing a brand new five page Brother Bone strip that I wrote for him many years ago. So, again, by the time this is done, uh, basically, we've got, I wrote one more story. That's what I wanted to remember. I also then wrote an eight-page Ravenwood Stepson of Mystery. And to the best of my knowledge, characters like Crimson Mask and Ravenwood have never been done in the comics, you know. Uh, until media. now. Until uh, now. Until now. So, so that's going to be illustrated by another local Colorado artist that I know named Sam Salas. And if we assemble just what I just described, we're going to end up with a 37-page pulp comic. So, fingers crossed that all comes together. And maybe by the end of the end of the summer, it, or maybe end of the year, it depends on how things how things float. Yep. Right. Fun, we fun, have fun. Issue number five of All Star Pulp Comics ready to go. I, I like. I, 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 you know, we get it. There was a time when Rob and I, I, I think after we did like one, two, and three, uh, it seemed like forever to get issue number four out, and we just didn't have the material yeah. and whatever. And yep. we, we do this series pretty much like we do the Airship 27 titles. And that's as material comes in, if we can fill an issue, we'll get it done. And as it just turns out with this particular issue, those things are happening bit by bit by bit. And like Rob said, by the end of summer, we could have this all put together. 
Yeah, and we like to we we like to publish it on Amazon where it's available. Uh, if it's so, the thing is, we do we do some page twenty four page comic books, and we have those printed at Kablam. They do an excellent job, but they they're they're fairly expensive because they're print on demand. So when we get to up to thirty four pages, then it's actually more economical to do it at Amazon. It's they're a lot cheaper that way. So we get to 34 pages, then it's very economical to do it there. So that's why we 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 try to wait till we've got that many together because the the with this kind of thing with this with an anthology like this, you want a lot of stories in it, you want a lot of pages, and again, it's cheaper that way. It's it, we it, so it it kind of pays for itself. We don't sell a lot of comics; we sell a lot more books than we sell comics. So. Of that we've got to do them as economically as possible. I'd love yeah. to do them in color, but that really shoots Ooh. the price way up. Yeah. So as as we learn with the Mr. Jigsaw Christmas special. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, you know, like I said, the the total of what we've assembled now for issue number five is thirty seven pages, as Rob just indicated, which puts us over that mark. All right. Right. And if we need. If we need a couple other pages, we'll find artists to do pinups for us or whatever, pulp characters, and yep. easily put it together. And we do have, um, Rob and I haven't even talked about this, but we do have uh, a Brother Bones painting in the wings by Stephen Otis. Do we? An idiot artist. Yeah, uh, we have been talking about the graphic novel. Oh, okay, and yeah. Remember, Steve did that really, really... Uh, amazing cover painted cover it's a painting right 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 yeah sadly the graphic novel has been put on hold again okay which which is nothing new those kind of things happen but at the same time we're left with maybe an anthology that will have a brother bones story in it and a brother bones co uh, cover so we got a cover we could yeah. get a cover we could put on it there you right. go yeah. yeah so hey uh you know keep listening to the show <laughs> stay those, tuned those, yeah, as those things develop. All right. Your turn, amigo. Okay. Since last time, what we've released, The Eye of Dawn. It's a thriller about immortals living in a secret society amongst us and was written by Brad Sinar. Artist Clayton Merwin is nearly finished with the interior illustrations. Uh, actually, this book is out now. You yep. must have written this before. I did. Uh, yep. it, it's it is finished, and the and once it is finished, the book will should come together fast, which it did. It is out there now. Right, and uh, I will be sending co copies of the cover to Brant, and as Brant's been doing the last you know ep few episodes, inserting those, so you'll get to see it. <laughs> the cover is by Ted Hammond. It's yeah, he does. Yeah, he does a nice job of that. That's cool. fun. Right, and this was Clayton Merwin's first work with us ever. Okay. Uh, and you will be seeing more of Clayton's work because, again, Rob, let's go back to uh, the comics. Clayton has also done comics in the past. Right. And l last year, sometimes last year, uh, we ran into what was a pretty serious uh, wall with a graphic novel that I'd been trying to put together for nearly 10 years, the Captain Hazard graphic right. novel. Right. And lo and behold, uh, because of different artists and different anchors and time passing by, literally an entire issue and a quarter of another one were lost. The pages are gone. They just nobody knows where they're at. Rob doesn't nope, have them. Gone. The anchor yeah, doesn't have gone. them. They're gone. gone. Which was most frustrating. Okay, and you know you you spend a long time, you know, and realizing that maybe this project is cursed it was never meant to be it's not going to get done and i mentioned that on facebook one day and said you know it's it's the game it's what happens and clayton jumped in immediately and said hey i'll finish those lost pages for you so i had the scripts and so this is something that rob and i haven't discussed uh and he's learning now uh <laughs> after after clayton finished doing his illustrations his first for us at airship 27 right. for the eye of dawn uh, he and I got to talking on Facebook one day and I said, um, what are you up to right now? And he said, well, I'm finishing another comic project, but as soon as it's done, I want to get to that captain hazard and get that finished for you and, and, and Rob and get okay. that done. So that's another comic pulp comic that 
with fingers crossed, we may actually see cross the finish line. But in the meantime, do check out Eye of Dawn. It's available at Amazon like all our books are. And what was the next book, Rob? <laughs> Which is technically <laughs> out as we're making this As podcast. we're speaking, it's not out. But by the time you hear this or, or view this, it will be out. So Jezebel Johnston, Volume 6, Sisters of Vengeance by Nancy Hansen. Continuing her amazing pirate queen saga, this volume picks up the fate of Jezebel Johnson, now sold into slavery along the Barbary Coast by Arab slavers. This is a, a lot different than previous volumes with a new setting and some truly amazing new characters added to the stage. But with the, with, but with the uh, bold action and adventure this series has always provided. As ever, yours truly provides the black black and white interior illustrations and i talked ron into let me do the cover on this one yes too. yes i love it I had, as i was doing the book i had this vision of what the cover should be oh. and i i did a little sketch of it and i sent it off to ron figuring he'd hand it off to somebody else he goes i love it you do it yeah. oh no okay. it's a great cover it's it, i yeah. it's, it's one of the best covers that's appeared on this series to date so yeah, yeah. it it features jezebel jezebel and her two new allies Trust us, loyal airmen, you won't want to miss this one. As ever, both these titles are available at Amazon in both paperback and on Kindle, or will be soon. Yeah, so, right. Again, by the so, time you're, you're listening to this yeah. show, they'll be out. Uh, <laughs> and you will also get to see this cover, hopefully, as Brant slides it into the show as we're talking about it. Uh, yeah, the cover is absolutely beautiful. I can't wait for Nancy to see it, because I know she's going <laughs> to love it, okay? Uh, yeah, so this is six volumes of this series, uh, and she's already working on volume seven, okay? Yep. It's, it's progressing. I know Rob enjoys it as much as I do. I love reading this book. I, I get to the end of it and I go, okay, where's the next chapter? I want to read the next one. So Yeah, because, yeah. it, 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 again, if, if you get invested into a saga like this, you know, years ago when, when we published, you know, volume one, uh, The Devil's Handmaid, <laughs> right, Jezebel was 14 years old. She was 14 years old, an island girl who sneaks on a pirate ship disguised as a boy. Now, you know, four or five years have gone by, and she's become a veteran pirate. She's been in sea battles and f fended and off. 18, you know, 19 years old now. Right. So, and, and yeah, yeah and one woman. One heck of a competent pirate, let me tell you, all right? So that it is really fascinating to see how Nancy brings the story line and the people who come and go. The series is so well-researched, it's authentic to a fault, believe me. But it never takes away from the fun of the adventure. And ultimately, you know, I know Rob feels like I do. I am so anxious we're going to get to that one point where Jezebel becomes the captain of her own ship. Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> that should be fun that that'll be, be fun. the payoff so thank yep. you so much nancy for bringing us that all right yes okay so what's coming up next okay well at present time no title is a clear and and, and obvious leader but hey yes. as it ever is. there are there are a few inching their way to completion uh, even as we're talking okay artist ed cotto is nearly done with his illustrations for the next Ravenwood stepson of mystery anthology. He only needs three more. Come on, Ed. Get to that finish line, please. All right. Artist Kevin Broden has actually begun working on the next Bay Phantom Thriller by Chuck Miller. And believe me, this one is a hoot. I mean, it guest stars Elliot Ness, of all people. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. I yeah. forgot about that. People are going to love this, okay? And after having had uh, artist uh, Brian McCullough do a cover for me uh, on Gene Moyers' new alternate world adventure, uh, airships, uh, no, Zeppelin, Zeppelin. Zeppelins over Africa, yeah. yep. um, I finally recruited Mike Harris about four weeks ago to do the interior illustrations. And he has started working nice. on it. So, Another package that's slowly coming together, but it's going to be right, you know, really well worth it when you see the results that are done. So that, Rob, hopefully is going to be start working on another Sherlock Holmes, which will be our volume 15 uh, eventually after he gets done a lot of his con and other obligations. So, yeah, we've still got some really, really exciting, you know, 
titles coming your way. And as ever, uh, we can hint at this or we can, you know, basically try to guess which ones there will be. But as ever, we'll wake up one morning and somebody will just have everything ready and something will just jump to the head of the line. So We're playing chess with the fates and we don't know what kind of move that that the fates are going to make. That uh, it we we never know what's going to happen for sure. Uh, well, we can we can guess. In fact, we can say this is definitely going to happen, and that I can guarantee you that's definitely not what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what'll happen to us. Well, so yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. S- we'll see what happens. It's fun. It's it really it really is fun. Okay, because because it's never the same thing every day. Every day is something new. It's either something good and 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 we're dancing a jig. Or we run into a problem that has to get solved and resolved or whatever. But that's the fun of doing this, okay? Yeah, well, and that's the, that's the definitely the challenge. That's what keeps this challenging because it, you you think, okay, I've got this down. This is, you know, I'm going to get tired of this. Yeah, again, the fates make this little strange little move on the chessboard and you go, what? <laughs> Where did that come from? And okay. then you have to deal yeah. with it. Yeah, you do. And that's it. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we had a bunch of questions last episode. This right. time, not so much. We have one. But yeah, let well, me well, tell you, it's a beaut. It is. <laughs> it, it is a beaut. beaut. All right, you want to read it, buddy? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get it going here. Uh, it's from Gene Moyers. And he asks, what do you think of the state of new pulp? Is it growing? Has it leveled off? Or is it in a bit of a slump? The reason I ask this is because I see signs that things are slowing. It seems that bro- both Pro Se and Joe at Moonstone are putting out less than they were a few years ago. I know your output was lower last year uh, than it has been, although that may be due to more production, art glitches, than interest of writers. Although you do seem to be putting out more things like Sherlock Holmes Nancy Hansen's books, and things like Bass Reeves. I know authors come and go, but there does seem to be fewer of the old guys writing Black Bat, Moon Man, and other classic pulp heroes lately. I know Fred Adams is practically keeping the mystery genre held up nearly single-handedly, and I'm keeping Purple Scar alive just for myself. But where's all the Domino Lady writers? It's a good seller. I sell more of that series than anything else I have written. Certainly, there must be some writers who want to get some books sold with their name on the covers. And the and my answer is that it's really up to the writers what books we assemble. Once we have all the stories and an artist, it's a matter of my finding time to mash the parts into InDesign and push out a new book. I do get a sense that there is a leveling off of production, but I don't think it's due to lack of reader demand but of a, a but of a lack of product to assemble. I'm hoping it's that the writers who work with us actually are busy working on other things and are having difficulty fitting in work on our series. That would be tremendous for them. I'd like me personally, I'd like to see another Secret Agent X book. And I agree that we're due for another Domino Lady book. Anyone got a Domino Lady novel in them? Ooh. Let's see what's Ooh. out there Ooh, waiting no. to fly into the hangar alongside the airship. Yeah. Okay. Hey, well said. Uh, look, one of the things, one of the themes that comes out with Gene's question, and, and I do understand it, but it was something that I really expected. Okay. Now, as far as the, the slowing down of production, uh, a great deal of what hit us in the airship 27 last year was a lack of artists. Really big time. Yeah. OK, yeah. it wasn't because we had, you know, writers not producing amongst them, Gene himself. All right. And I've still got a huge backlog of really great stories and novels sitting in the files just waiting for artists. But in looking across the board, I, I know for a fact that uh, Tommy Hancock at Pro Se had once again some health issues that came up during last year. OK. And of course. Those are going to take priority. They have to, all right? Yep. But, hey, yep. uh, that, that's come and gone. Tommy's back with a vengeance. Uh, he's putting out new titles every week. Uh, 
go to any of the pulp sites on Facebook and you'll see that a lot of it's great work. And he's come up with a new idea, which I I don't feel you know at liberty to discuss. But all you pulp fans out there, pay attention. Tommy's Tommy's as active as ever. All right. Now, as far as Joe and Moonstone, yeah, I saw a lessening of that as well. Uh, but for whatever reasons, I can't answer, uh, you know, personally, no I, idea. Will, I, I will no. tell you one thing that I do know for a fact, uh, later this year, Joe is going to be publishing, uh, a, how can I say it? A seven part black bat domino lady graphic collection that I wrote. Oh. All right. Years ago, he hired me to do a three part mini series of the black bat and then a four part mini series of the black bat and domino lady. The three part mini was actually published in individual issues. And then for whatever reason, again, Joe hit the same wall we did, buddy with artist problems. Okay. Well, yeah. after two years, that second mini series has been completely illustrated. Cool. All, all four issues. But rather than release them one at a time as a miniseries, he is combining all four issues and the previous three and publishing this wicked big thick pulp comic book. Yeah, that's the way to do it these days. Yeah, yep. Right, obviously. Graphic so, novel sizes is what sells these days. Yeah. Right. You, it's so, about the only thing you can make money on anymore. Exactly. Right. So that is coming out from Moonstone. And as far as writing in anthologies, I believe they just did another uh, Avenger novel recently I, I think i saw some it's something in matthew a bow was the author yeah. okay so yes yeah, so they're, they're by no means out of the new pulp business okay now no. going back to airship 27 and gene's pointing you know the the topic to not seeing you know more of the classic characters but seeing a lot of new stuff well you know what I really expected that when we created Airship 27. And I think Rob will, will, you know, join me in that. When we first opened up the company and started, you know, inviting writers to come on board and help us out, it was intended to do the classic pulp characters that were in public domain. And and right from the get-go, we had several writers who were like, well, can I give you this character that I created? You remember yes. the ship? And we basically yeah. said, no, 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 no. We want to get established. Let us get established by doing Secret Agent X and Domino Lady and Crimson Mask and, and all the others, okay? Once we've done that and the community, the pulp community as a whole, knows who Airship 27 is and we feel comfortable enough on our position in the industry and the market, then please let me have your idea for new stories. Well, that shift has happened, Gene. We're at that point yeah. right now where I get as many ideas for new characters and new novels. Again, like we just mentioned, Gene Moyes' alternate world, uh, Zeppelin's Over Africa. It, Nan he's Nancy doing it too. <laughs> Nancy Hansen gives us the pirate saga, all right? So all these are new properties, okay? And, yeah, I, you know, I recognize that, okay, because I look in our files, and I'm, I'm with Rob. I, I love Secret Agent X, and I'd love to do some more. Let me add this. Again, we mentioned it. We do have a new Ravenwood uh, anthology in the works as soon as Ed finishes three illustrations, okay? We have had a brand new Domino Lady anthology filled for almost a year now. Yeah. And the reason we can't get it out is because interior artist James Lyle has been wicked busy with a lot of his own pro. He's teaching art. And, and everything else. So his commitments have stopped him from finishing that book for us. It's not that we don't want to get it out. Domino Lady does sell. All right. And we have it. And I've got, I've got writers sending me He's Domino done. Lady's He's not right now. Okay. Yeah. okay. And within the <laughs> next, within the next month, if, if my editorial hat's on straight, we're going to wrap up collecting uh, a brand new Dan Fowler G-Man anthology. I've already got two stories in, and writers Whit Holland and Fred Adams Jr. will be sending me two new uh, Dan Fowler shorts. Okay, so again, by midsummer, you should be seeing the third Dan Fowler anthology. And while all this is going on, <laughs> Fred, Fred Adams writes me and goes. Uh, you know that idea I had for a, for a Dan Fowler story? 
uh, it, it, it's grown a life of its own. I can't do it as a short story. So I'll give you another short story, and then I'll write this as a novel. Oh, my God. <laughs> so we're going to get a damn file. Oh, so, my so God. We by no means abandon the classics, Gene. Not at all. Okay, And, of course, Gene, you're doing the Purple Scar to perfection that we absolutely love. Yeah. Okay? So, yes. So yes, yes, any, yes. any opportunity we have to, to do those classic characters and to keep doing them, we very much want to do it as time will allow, as artists, you know, that come on board will allow. Um, I think new pulp is healthy. Uh, I'll, I'll yeah. have a, have a better feel for that after Rob and I do the convention circuit this year. April yes. comes along we're heading for Windy City, uh, which is always so much fun for us. Uh, and we'll be giving out the pulp factory awards this year again. All right. Uh, which is going to be a joy. Um, in fact, voting for the ballot ends just in another week, March the 13th. Uh, yeah, right. Friday the 13th. So <laughs> so we're, we're doing Windy City, and at the end of summer, we're going back to Pulp Fest, as we announced last yeah, that'll episode. That'll be the real test. We'll, it, we'll, we'll know how healthy things are by going to, the, going to that show. It sounds like they're they're doing really well fingers crossed that it's doing real well and we can we can maybe start going back to the if not every year maybe every other year yep. yeah so, so hey i hope that answers your question to some degree uh again we both we're busy all the time and i i gather from my writers and artists that i work with so are they and it's like rob said you know they don't only work for us they do other things on their own as well so i i don't yep. I don't. If it's slowed down, it's very minuscule. All right, it's going to go up in, in in waves like most creative things do. And who knows? Maybe 2020 by the end of this year will have been a banner year for new pulp fiction. Let's hope so. Yep. Fingers crossed. All right. Uh, no. <laughs> I. Anything goes. I got one little thing I have. I have to talk about. I I do. Okay. okay? Because we I, we mentioned it uh, last episode. And we mentioned it online or whatever, but I recently, uh, we, Airship 27, recently published my memoirs, okay? Yes. My Life in Comics. And thank you for all of you who bought it. Thank you for the, you know, the reviews that have popped up on Amazon that have been amazing and heartfelt. And I am humbled and, and touched by all of them, all right? Now, the fun and, and continued when our dear friend Tom Brown at Radio Archive said, well, yeah, we're going to do a you know, uh, an audio book version. And that came out last week. Okay? I'm stunned how fast that came out. Oh, I know. <laughs> All right. There it was. All right. The reader is a gentleman named Mark Finfrock. Okay. He did it over the weekend and apparently had a great time. Okay. So here it oh, is. Oh, my. You got a copy. <laughs> I, 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 I actually bought three, Rob. I wanted one. <laughs> I bought one for myself, and I'm going to take a couple to a local cons here in town. And for, you know, those of you scratching your heads and saying, well, you know, why is he doing that, blah, blah, blah. I, we, I did a book uh, through Radio Archives called Nighthawk. And the same, I did the same thing. All right, I bought a copy for myself, and I bought a couple extra copies. And I have sold them at shows. One time, Rob, I had a, a young man, uh, college age who came over to the table and he was looking around the con. This was here in Fort Collins. And he was looking at my titles, right? And as we were talking, he saw an audio book, the set from Radio Archives for Nighthawk. Mm -hmm. And he picked it up and then he, you know, he saw the book next to it. And I said, well, yeah, it's, it's that book. It's an audio version. And he looked at me and he had glasses on and he had trouble with his eyesight. Yeah. All right. And reading is very difficult for him. And he was delighted to see that audio book and bought it right there on the spot. So, wow. yeah, that's why I bought the extra copies, okay, for maybe other fans and people who come to the show and have seeing problems or whatever, okay, and enjoy audio books yeah. where they don't have to do that, okay. And what I wanted to add, and the reason I definitely wanted to show this is uh, it's five hours long. Each CD is an hour. And I'm listening. I, I've listened to the first two CDs since I, since I got the set. And Mark is really an excellent, excellent reader. Because uh, the fun of this is, although he sounds nothing like yours truly, all right, my, <laughs> Valerie, my wife, is laughing. She immediately got 
that he understands my speech pattern. The cadence. Yeah. Cadence. So that he knows when to stop, when the buildup is, when there's going to be a joke, when they're, you know, add a little drama or excitement. I'm, I'm listening to this and having a blast. So, Mark, if you're listening to this show, I'm going to give you a shout out. All right. You're doing a fantastic job. Thank you so much. It really means a lot to me. I, I sense that you enjoyed reading the book. Thanks for doing that. And so there you go, Loyal Airman. If you're looking for that or all the other Airship 27 audiobooks, you need to go to www.radioarchives.com and tell them that Rob and Ron sent you, okay? Uh, they're doing a fantastic job with these sets. Absolutely amazing. Okay. And we've done it. We're, we're here. Yeah, we're down down the last five minutes for the hour. <laughs> Come, Ron's joke. All right, Ron's oh, bad. Oh, no, here we go. Here. Okay. Two old friends run into each other downtown. One looks at the other one and says, so how you doing? He says, oh, I woke up in the middle of the night with a burglar in my house looking for money. Oh, my God, what would you do? I got dressed and helped him. <laughs> wow short but sweet <laughs> i got dressed and helped him <laughs> if you find anything we'll split it you know? <laughs> if you can find money you i'll split it with you <laughs> I, read that, I read that online up a oh, week ago and I, I, it busted me up i totally got that but, it sounds like my house. <laughs> oh. So there you go, Willerman. Two winners this this month for sure. Stinkers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as ever, thank thanks for stopping by. Uh, and and hey, you know we really appreciate it. Uh, welcome. Any critiques? Any ideas for future shows? Any questions? questions? Send us questions. Yes, yeah, send us questions, please. All right, and by all means, sh you know, share the show with your friends and other people who might have an interest in in pulp fiction of any kind, caliber, or whatever. Or so making fun of two old geezers on on doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, amen, amen. All right, buddy, I'll let you sign us out. All right, this is. Airship 27's Chief Engineer Rob Davis signing off. And as ever, Captain Ron says, down ship. This has been a Gonzo Goose production. Bonk!